Hey guys, James again for TFB TV. Today I have the Aries SCR carbine for you. Now some of you may recall that I did a written review of the Aries SCR a few months back, right when this thing first came out, and I did that for TFB. If you remember the review or if you read it, I recognize that while this gun has somewhat of a revolutionary design, the major issue with that gun was the trigger was so bad that it made it almost not serviceable. So I actually ran into Jeff from Aries at a convention in October, and he and I talked about that review. This is the Aries SCR, the Model 2. This is an improved version. This one comes with a front iron sight, unlike the last one. Uh, Model 1 had just the gas block, and I don't even think there was rail on the gas block to mount a sight. So it's nice that this one comes with kind of an A2 style front post. It also has a really nice rear peep sight to go with it. So those features were missing from the first SCR. And of course, most importantly, the trigger has been significantly improved. And another feature the SCR has that the Model 1 did not have is a last round bolt hold open. As you can see, rack it and the bolt holds open. So anyways, I've been gabbing on about the difference between the Model 1 and the Model 2 without telling you exactly why this gun is revolutionary. So for those of you unfamiliar with it, here's the deal. This gun has a sporting style stock similar to a shotgun, similar to a hunting rifle, yet it takes almost any AR-15 upper. Now, why is that significant? For those of us that live in free states, it's nice to have something. This still takes a 30 round magazine. You can mount your lights, EOTEX, aim points, whatever you want. It's just as modular as the AR-15 and just as tactically practical. However, it's a lot less intimidating and some people may just prefer the sporting style stock. So that's one consideration, but I would say the most important improvement that this gun provides is that those of you in band states can now use not any AR-15 upper, of course, check your local laws, but you can use now AR-15 uppers and you've got what is for the most part compliant, a lower that's compliant in many states. Now, one thing that bothered me about some of the comments in my first review is uh, when people were saying, oh, it's SCR, just pandering to the band states, California, New York, whatever. Uh, I cannot fucking believe you people. Just because somebody lives in a state where they can't own a true AR style lower doesn't mean that they should be deprived of the same practical, tactical advantages that the AR-15 upper offers. And I, for one, I applaud Ares for making the AR-15 platform available to people who live in band states. Anyways, I'm starting to wade into the political side of it and I don't wanna do that. But that said, I just wanna say, hey, Ares, I think this is a great move. It's been a great seller. And I think it's excellent that people who live in band states can now avail themselves of the many options that you have available with the AR-15 platform. Anyways, let me go over the specs with you real quick. And then Aries said that this gun is much more shootable than version one. We'll see. I'm going to take this to the range. I'm going to shoot it with the iron sights and I'll tell you if that's true. Quick technical specs. This one's a 223 that weighs only 5.7 pounds. Extremely lightweight, very easy to handle. It has an overall length of 37 inches, 16.25 inch barrel with a one in nine twist. The 16.25 inch barrel comes with a carbine length gas system and the 18 inch barrel comes with a rifle length gas system. Both of them will come with Magpul MOE handguards. It comes with a five round magazine. It's mil spec black hard coat anodized and 100% made in the US. Some of the more astute viewers might be asking, how did Ares get an AR upper to work with this sporting style lower without the AR buffer tube? And it's actually a pretty simple answer. They integrated the recoil system that you've seen on just about every semi-auto shotgun that you've seen on the FAL. It's a proven design where they attach a rat tail 
to the back of the bolt carrier group and that rat tail pushes a recoil spring at a downward angle into the stock. The only downside of this is that you have to use Aries bolt carrier group, but that doesn't really limit your upper options very much. Anyways, this was a pretty brilliant idea from Aries and it works very well. Ooh, man, this thing is about 100 times cooler looking with a 20 round magazine on it. Just had to pour some America on this son of a bitch and now it looks great. I mean, even with the sporting stock, still looks pretty badass. Huge improvement, huge improvement. Cross bolt safety. A lot of you guys are gonna reach with your thumb for the the typical selector, but here it's cross bolt. So if you guys want to see something kind of funny, I'll see if I can slow this down and post, but uh, you know, this is an extremely lightweight, light recoiling gun. And it's always funny to me when people put severe muzzle brakes on a, a 5.56, 223, whatever. It, it really, I don't think it needs it. And it's funny, if, if there are, are people out there who, who do like them, find out whatever this six hole job is that they have at the end of this SCR, because it's annoyingly effective. And what I mean by that is the muzzle on this gun it's like the Titanic. I can't stop it from going down. I mean, just watch. I, I'll, have a, I'll have my sight picture and I'll fire and this muzzle brake will actually push the muzzle down. It's that effective. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it, but uh, it, damn, it, it's effective. And this might be appealing to a lot of you uh, shooters out there who are more recoil sensitive or, or who want a brake like this. Uh, did you see that? This thing. Every time I'd, I'd shoot it, dip, dip. I, I, I've never seen anything like it. Um, that's pretty cool. Again, it's not my thing, but, uh, but that is pretty neat. And uh, that, this little six hole muzzle brake is, is quite effective. Now, again, once you put an optic on here, the charging handle really becomes a pain in the ass. It's already not very well suited for this kind of sporting style stock but when you have the optic in there, you have like about a half inch of clearance to charge this thing. But that said, if I had to choose between like a left-handed or right-handed charging gun um, versus this AR style charging handle, just for the sake of simplicity, I'd stick with the AR style charging handle. Again, it's not the best, but you've got a lot of charging handle options. You retain compatibility across uppers. But this is, I mean, a, a very lightweight, light recoiling package. And as I said earlier, I, I wish they'd maybe take two of these ports off this muzzle brake because every time I'm shooting it, it's dipping, it's dipping. Uh, so it's like reverse recoil, go figure. And I mean, this trigger, again, coming in at around six and a half, seven pounds, much lighter. And that combined with the muzzle brake and the very light recoiling 223 round, uh, you're getting a very easy to handle package here. That sounded weird. So I shot a few groups with the SCR and I never really managed to shoot an outstanding group, but none of them were bad. Uh, three, four round groups between an inch and a half, two and a half inches with this little pencil barrel and this shitty $80 scope, um, you know, doing pushing two MOA. Uh, two inches, roughly two inches at 100 meters. So that's, that's not too bad, especially considering I was using crap ammo. I mean, shooting Wolf factory reloads. So it wasn't that good to begin with, the, the ammo wasn't. So, uh, you know, you run some match ammo through this, who knows, you might be able to eke an inch out of it. One thing I do wanna note, uh, barrel is a one in nine twist. So you're gonna have to stick to the lighter stuff, unfortunately. 
While the original SCR brought a lot of options and almost black rifle capability to you guys in band states, it was lacking. I had some issues, as you can see in the prior review, especially uh, with the trigger and the lack of a last round bolt hold open. Fortunately, with the Model 2, Ares has listened to the customers and you have, I just measured it, it's about a six and a half to seven pound, very crisp single stage trigger on this gun. Better than most GI ARs. The inclusion of a front sight's also a welcome addition. Like I said, the last round bolt hold open is nice, as well as being able to drop the bolt with the ping pong paddle on the back. Because racking this with a typical AR charging handle, because of the sporting stock is not really that comfortable. But remember guys, you can take this lower and you can put any upper you want on it. All you need to do is drop this bolt into any AR upper and then you just have your two push pins. Slap it right on and you're good to go. Ares has always been a very innovative company. They make great products, they stand behind them and most importantly, they listen to the customers. That's why I've got the Model 2 in my hand. So for those of you guys in band states who want the closest possible thing to the AR-15, this is it. Or just for you guys who want, for whatever reason, AR capability in a sporting, a less imposing sporting hunting stock platform, this is also a great choice. Anyways, thank you to Ares for sending me this rifle. Thank you to our subscribers and our viewers. And thank you to our sponsor, Ventura Munitions. See you next week. Hey guys, it's Alex again with TFB TV. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you did, we've actually just launched a Patreon page. If you could consider donating a dollar or two a month, it would really help us out and allow us to continue doing this. And uh, we like doing it and we hope you enjoy watching the videos. Until next time.